Welcome to Canada Report this week. I'm Lona Vigeli. Thank you for joining us. Coming up in the next half hour, the state attorney's office announces the indictment of the individual who struck and killed Montgomery County Police Officer Noah Liotta. The county's Board of Education approves its FY17 operating budget. And later, the county executive is taking nominations for this year's Montgomery Serves Awards. But first, research shows that students who do not have access to the internet or computers at home struggle academically. And officials agree addressing this digital divide is critical in keeping students engaged. Recently, council members heard how the county is doing closing the digital divide. Susan Kennedy has a story. Montgomery County is fortunate that all of its schools are connected to the internet. However, once the bell rings and school is out, that connection doesn't follow all the students home. We are, I think, engaged in facing a very significant challenge uh, in terms of keeping up with factors that exacerbate this opportunity gap. Comcast offers its Internet Essentials program to qualifying families for just $9.95 a month. However, there are only 48,000 subscribers to this service in the entire D.C. region. That's Craig Rice says those numbers exactly speak to the need to look at the technology supply side of this issue. The reality is, however, that as this program exists, uh, the devices uh, don't. Uh, we see a lot of folks who unfortunately uh, are, uh, come from schools where they have uh, strong parental engagement and folks who have the ability to pay and so therefore are buying uh, additional Chromebooks to ensure that every single one of the students in each of these grade levels has Chromebooks. But the reality is that doesn't exist at all of our schools. School officials say they are working to make it easier for those families to access the technology they need to receive a quality education, but council members are concerned there needs to be better coordination in order to achieve that goal. This current school year, we worked with Comcast in a very explicit set of direct uh, uh, mailings to change our strategies around uh, how can we better engage uh, and advertise the program to our families. Um, the enrollment is still not where we'd like for it to be. How do we better understand what those barriers are? And at the same time, we're seeking to understand those barriers. What are the ways in which we can uh, do out more direct outreach efforts uh, to engage those communities? The strategy from the get-go, even if it's not going to be perfect, should be that this should, that this should be a parallel approach, that it's not just what's happening in the classroom trying to figure out and then we'll figure out what's happening at home that our strategy from the get-go which just declare has to be on parallel tracks. The school system continues to be resistant to set up a policy uh, and I think that anybody who lives here in Montgomery County uh, the majority of folks believe in uh, paying their fair share so I think that there are not a lot of parents out there who wouldn't say give 50 cents of my dollar to help a kid uh, who was that wouldn't have access to uh, technology to be able to get that and so that's really what this is about. In Rockville I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. A Montgomery County grand jury has indicted an only man for the December 3rd collision that resulted in the death of police officer Noah Liotta. My MC Media's Sonia Bork reports. We are here today to formally announce the indictment of Luis Gustavo Belusco, age 48, of Olney, Maryland. Police say Reluso was behind the wheel when Officer Noah Leota was struck by a car while working a holiday alcohol task force on December 3rd. Officer Leota died from his injuries a week later. Mr. Reluzco has been indicted with manslaughter by automobile and failing to move over upon approaching an emergency vehicle. Information was presented to the grand jury that Mr. Reluzco admitted to drinking for three hours in a bar consuming beers as well as shots of bourbon. When his blood was tested after the crash, he had a 0.22 blood alcohol level. A judge ordered Relusco held on a bond of $250,000. And after that hearing, defense attorney John Roth said his client is remorseful. My client is destroyed by what occurred on the night of December the 3rd. Uh, he makes absolutely no excuse for his actions on that night. Officer Leota's family attended the court hearing, and both his parents were wearing his badges. We wear these all the time. It makes us feel closer to him. It's a part of him. He wore this. He was proud of the badge. He was proud to be a police officer. 
Noah, I love you, I miss you, and I'm going to fight for you and every other victim of drunk driving for the rest of my life. In Rockville, I'm Sonia Burke for County Report This Week. The Olney Chamber of Commerce established a scholarship fund to commemorate the life and passion of Montgomery County Police Officer Noah Leota. According to the Olney Chamber, the Officer Noah Leota Act Responsibly Scholarship in the amount of $1,000 will be awarded to local high school students committed to pursuing public safety and law enforcement careers. Applicants will be evaluated on leadership, civic and volunteer activities, as well as academic performance. The Chamber is asking local businesses and residents to help grow the scholarship fund. So far, over $3,500 have been raised. You can find out more information about this scholarship by visiting the Olney Chamber's website. The Montgomery County Sheriff's Office is putting out this alert. Telephone scammers are again using the guise of a sheriff's deputy to extort people into immediately sending money to avoid arrest. In the last week, over 50 residents reported receiving a scam call requesting money or credit card information. The caller falsely claims to be from the sheriff's office, says that a warrant issued for your arrest will be served unless, of course, you pay up. It is important that residents know that the sheriff's office will never call and threaten to arrest unless you pay or send electronic payment. Do not provide any caller with any personal, credit card, or bank information. If called, just hang up. If you are the victim of a fraud and have been given the scammer credit card payment information, please notify your credit card company, as well as the Montgomery County Police Fraud Unit by calling 240-773-6330. Coming up on County Report this week, the Board of Education approves its $2.5 billion operating budget. And the Office of Human Rights has set a date for its annual civil rights tour. County Report this week will return after this. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. In Montgomery County, we have a goal to reduce waste and recycle 70% of all waste by 2020. By recycling and reducing waste, we save natural resources and make our community even better. So recycle at home, work, school, everywhere, and keep recycling going. For more information, call the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311 or visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash recycling. Keep it going. Recycle more now. Welcome back to County Report this week. I'm Lorna Vigili. The Montgomery County Board of Education approved a $2.5 billion operating budget request for fiscal year 2017. MCPS-TV has that story. We now move on to item 6.1, which is adoption of the fiscal year 2017 operating budget. The Montgomery County Board of Education took action to approve the superintendent's operating budget for fiscal year 2017. The board's $2.5 billion budget includes a $45 million amendment designed to strengthen the system's foundation, which has been squeezed by eight years of difficult economic times. Since 2009, student enrollment at MCPS has grown by 17,000 students, or 12.4 percent, with a staffing increase of only 3.3 percent. Board members discuss the importance of additional funds to increase teacher and staff positions, lower class sizes, and close the achievement gap. With the numbers growing and the dynamics changing, there is a breaking point, and I very strongly feel that we have reached our breaking point. 
and we are going to continue to see declines if we don't have the supports in place. The American Psychologist Association recommends one psychologist to 700 to 1,000 students. We've got one psychologist to 2,000 students, uh, double the amount recommended by the American Psychologist Association. So um, this isn't like we're asking for fringe and whistles. We're asking for what we need. Investing in programs that are specifically geared to address the needs of African-American students, I support. Amended. The board passed the budget with its amendment by a vote of six to one. Board President Michael Durso commented on the $45 million amendment. We need additional money to address class size and other staffing issues that we feel are crucial. They, you know, Mr. Kaufman know, made a really good point be, that education you know, is the greatest return on investment that we can get in public spending. And um, I don't think we can go wrong with education. We know that children come to us with various needs, um, and many children come to us with increasing needs. We know that it's really important for teachers to be able to meet the needs of each of those kids in the class, and that takes time. So if you have fewer kids in the class, it's a simple equation. I've got more time for each child. The board's budget will be submitted to the county executive and then to the county council, who will vote on it in May. The budget represents a $180.2 million increase over the current year's budget. The county's Department of Recreation is gearing up for the youth employment program during the summer months. This week on the county's Spanish language radio show, we talked about how county youth can start getting ready to apply for jobs through the Recreations Teamworks program. Youth can go to our website and uh, look for Teamworks. Uh, this is a team employment program that helps you build, you know, create your own resume, look for the ways to look for a job. We help you, we, prom we, we help you throughout the whole process of, you know, looking for a job, getting ready for an interview, getting uh, preparing your uh, resume ready and then you know once you go through all that we actually show you we do mock interviews and we get you uh, try to get you on, a, on one of those positions that we have opening for the summer for more information or to apply visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash rec and search for teamworks Montgomery College joined other local community colleges on an expedition to the state's capital for this year's Student Advocacy Day. MCTV's James McLean has a story. On Wednesday, community college students from across the state gathered in Annapolis for Student Advocacy Day to share with elected officials their thoughts on the significance of community colleges. What we're doing here today is to show the delegates and senators about our community college and what we do and what we're representing. Montgomery College students in attendance split into three groups and journeyed through the halls of the Miller Senate building to meet with state senators and delegates. The mission? To express their gratitude and garner further support. As a student, it means a lot because I get to speak with all the senators and delegates, the people who are making the laws and the people who are making the budget. I hope to bring awareness to these senators and these delegates to let them know that we at Montgomery College need this funding to continue what we're doing for our students. Montgomery College President Dr. Darion Pollard accompanied these industrious students on their quest for consult. Our students are the best representation and reflection of what we do as a community college. What I think is pretty remarkable about this is that we have students who choose to come up to Annapolis and talk about their stories and to share the impact that Montgomery College has on them and their lives. These legislators were all too happy to receive their invited guests and were left with favorable impressions of these reputable students. It's great having uh, the students here. Uh, they make a difference in terms of what the funding levels are for community colleges, and it's good uh, for them to be here in Annapolis because uh, we get the reinforced knowledge that our money is not only well spent, but is paying dividends now and into the future. Student Advocacy Day is coordinated by the Maryland Association of Community Colleges, an organization dedicated to advocating the benefits of community colleges for the citizens of the state. For County Report This Week in Annapolis, I'm James McLean. The Montgomery County Office of Human Rights is hosting a civil rights historic bus tour that retraces the steps of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and other civil rights heroes from April 3rd through the 10th. 
The cost of the six-day bus tour can be located on the website and includes hotel, transportation, some meals, and all museum fees. As he speaks about the Freedom Tour and its eight stops, Jim Stowe gets passionate and emotional. That's what you're going to experience is an educational experience from the very beginning. Uh, we'll be going down uh, from stop to stop along the way. Uh, as it turns out, we'll be going some 2,300 miles when it's all said and done uh, to really take a, a look at uh, the civil rights movement uh, in the front chair. Uh, and so you get a chance then to be able to kind of see it at that perspective. The first stop is in Greensboro, North Carolina, followed by Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia, of course, is the site of Dr. King's birthplace, uh, also the church where he co-pastored with his father, uh, Ebenezer Baptist Church, and also the Park Service has also a museum there that also chronicles much of the civil rights movement as well. And so I think it's so important that people know that, and also the Center for Nonviolent Social Change. Then to Birmingham, Montgomery, Selma, and Tuskegee in Alabama. Education from the very time we step onto the bus to the time, in fact, we exit the bus. Uh, along the way, we'll be looking at uh, documentaries, and, and we, as a fact, we have also partnered with uh, uh, the uh, library system here uh, in Montgomery County. Uh, there'll be a reading list available to those who go along with us to read up beforehand about what they're going to see and where they're going to be visiting and so forth. So they'll be real clear about uh, the importance of those actual steps, stops along the way. If interested, call 240-777-8479 or visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash human rights. Coming up on Counter Report this week, Montgomery College Raptors win the JUCO basketball title. And the county executive is taking nominations for the Montgomery Serves Awards. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. County residents are required by law to clear sidewalks in front of and alongside their properties within 24 hours of the end of a snowstorm. Working together, Montgomery County can stay safe and warm this winter. Good neighbors clear their sidewalks of ice and snow. For more information, call 311 or go to montgomerycountymd.gov forward slash safe sidewalks. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. This message brought to you by FEMA. Home fires occur most often in winter. Keep anything that can catch fire at least three feet from heating equipment. And never use an oven to heat your home. Stay in the kitchen when frying, grilling, or broiling food. Turn space heaters off when you leave the room or go to bed. Make sure all vents are clear of snow and ice to allow carbon monoxide to vent outside. Have your furnace, heating system, and chimneys serviced each year by a qualified professional. Learn more at www.usfa.fema.gov. Welcome back to County Report this week. I'm Lorna Virgili. After 22 years, the Montgomery College men's basketball team wins the Maryland Juco title. Here's the story from MCTV. In the tournament opener, the Raptors took on number five seed Hagerstown. MC fell behind early and trailed at the half 37-32. But the second half was a different story behind D'Angelo Vaughn, who led all scores with 25, and Pat Smith and Devin Pestano. The Raptors quickly grabbed the lead and never let go, pulling away to an 81-58 win. Up next, the semis against league power Baltimore City. Baltimore jumped in front and led the entire half, going to break up 38-33. They pushed their lead to 12 midway through the second, but MC didn't wilt. Pestano cut the Baltimore lead to five with seven and a half to go. But with under three to play, Pat Smith fouled out with MC still down five. But Terrell Baker cut the Baltimore lead to three, and then with a minute to go, Vaughn drove the length of the floor, scored, was fouled, and his free throw gave MC their first lead 62-61.
A Carl Brown free throw with seven seconds to go made it MC 63, Baltimore 61, as the Raptors pulled off the upset to head to the final. In the final, the Raptors faced Harford, their third D1 team in three days. MC jumped out to a quick lead and held it for most of the half, going to break up 37-35. And other than one brief moment with 15 minutes to go, they held the lead the rest of the way. Every time Harford made a run, the Raptors had an answer. A long three from Vaughn, or maybe Aaron Thomas. A power move down low from Smith, or a slash to the hoop from Terrell Baker as the Raptors pulled away for an 82-71 win. The win gave the Raptors their first Maryland Juco basketball title in 24 years. D'Angelo Vaughn and Pat Smith made first team all Maryland Juco. Vaughn was also named tournament MVP and head coach Keith Bird was named coach of the year. For County Report this week from Montgomery College, I'm Michael Brown. If you know of an outstanding county volunteer, here's an opportunity for that individual to be recognized. Montgomery County Executive Ike Leggett is now accepting nominations for the Neil Potter Path of Achievement Award and the Montgomery Serves Awards. These awards honor outstanding community leaders and dedicated volunteers. Executive Leggett encourages residents to submit nominations of individuals, businesses, and community groups. The nominating form can be found at MontgomeryServes.org. Nomination deadline is Friday, February 26th by 5 p.m. And the Montgomery Serves Awards ceremony will take place at Imagination Stage in Bethesda on Monday, May 2nd. And don't forget to attend the free family-friendly H2O Summit. That's right, participants can learn how their daily actions affect local streams and rivers. Meet local environmental leaders who are working to make Montgomery County a cleaner, greener place to live. If you would like to learn how to get involved in protecting drinking water, don't miss the H2O Summit, which is scheduled for Saturday, March 5th from 9.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. at the Rockville Senior Center. Coming up next on County Report this week, I'll take you to Laytonsville, where Montgomery County's first farm brewery just opened. And let's thank spring and enroll in fun and active programs offered by recreation. Don't go away. County Report this week is coming right back. It's on us to stop sexual assaults. Be more than a bystander. It's on us to hold our friends accountable. Realize that we have a role to play in stopping sexual assault. It's on us to get in the way before someone gets hurt. It's on us to take responsibility. And it's on us not to look the other way. Keep an eye on someone in a vulnerable situation. Stop a sexual assault any way we can. Any way we can. If you see something happening, report it. It's on us to take responsibility. Be more than a bystander. It's on us. It's on us. It's on all of us. Welcome back to County Report this week. I'm Lorna Vigili. It's time to start thinking about what recreation classes you want to take this spring, and there is plenty to do for our young adults and children. The county's Department of Recreation has made available its guide for spring programs, and registration is officially opened. Offering a wide range of classes designed to help participants stay active and have fun. The county recently launched a new recreation enrollment website where residents can open an account and register for classes and other programs. Register by Tuesday, March 15 and get $25 off select parks and recreation camps. Just enter early bird in the coupon field on activemontgomery.org. You can find the spring guide online at montgomerycountymd.gov slash rec or call 240 777 
1-800-688-6840 for more information. February is Craft Beer Lovers Month in Maryland, and if you are a beer aficionado, Montgomery County has several breweries to choose from. My MC Media's Willie James Inman went around town to talk with local brewers. Did you know that February is Craft Beer Month in Maryland? Locally brewed craft beer is now on tap throughout the county. Montgomery County has several craft breweries and the movement keeps growing. Wardaka is the first farm brewery here in Montgomery County and produces over 300 gallons of craft beer per week. Within the last year and a half, we decided we wanted to expand our agritourism opportunities, which led us to adding the Working Farm Brewery. We are the first farm brewery in the county. That means we are growing some of our ingredients on the farm. We have a hops yard and a production brewer's garden. As far as a Maryland craft beer scene, I think we're just starting to, you know, just starting to find our, our footing. Uh, places like Flying Dog and Evolution have been doing it, um, and Heavy Seas have been doing it on a bigger platform for a lot longer. Uh, they're starting to become a lot more small players like ourselves, and uh, I think that's just good for craft beer in general. Since opening in 2014, Denizen's Brewing Company in Silver Spring has seen a tremendous amount of growth. Although starting a business can be hard, these brewers say Montgomery County is tops when it comes to craft beer. We worked with the county council, we worked with the Montgomery County State Delegation, um, the local chambers of commerce, um, and actually the DLC, in fact, um, to help create some legislative changes that allow us to sell our beer and kegs directly to bar and restaurants, bars and restaurants, without having to go through the DLC at all. In any construction, you know, construction plan, 15 months is pretty quick. So we, you know, and we couldn't have done that without Montgomery County's help. This is a whole industry that in other parts of the country supports, you know, literally hundreds or even thousands of jobs, you know, in a community. And people are really enjoying it. I think. The community is just really responding to um, how a place like Laytonsville, you know, now can have an exciting destination spot for an afternoon or an evening, or a place like Silver Spring. I'm Willie James Inman for County Report This Week. Rockville celebrates the Year of a Monkey. Here is Rock 11 Now's Kathy Dantzler with more on the city's Lunar New Year celebration. It's a celebration of culture, the Asian American culture, as Rockville brings in the Chinese New Year with its Lunar New Year celebration. In the Asian American culture, each Chinese New Year is dedicated to a specific animal, and this year, it's the Year of the Monkey. It is the Year of the Monkey, yes. It's not monkey business, <laughs> but we are going to have fun. Recognizing that the Asian community is continuously growing in Rockville, the mayor and council created a 12-member Asian Pacific American Task Force in 2008. It created a line of communication between the Asian American community and the city government. We, our purpose of the uh, task force is to uh, promote the uh, activities of the Asian communities and we serve as a bridge between the city and the Asian communities, which means Chinese, Korean, Japanese, uh, Filipino, Vietnamese, uh, Indian, you, you name it. And Rockville is the, uh, one of the largest concentration of the Asian Americans uh, in this area. The task force, along with Rockville's Human Rights Commission, puts on a Lunar New Year celebration every year as part of its outreach to one of the largest cultural groups in Rockville. It says we want to meet some people who are different. We want to celebrate people who are different than ourselves um, and it says that we want to create an environment where it's important to um, live with different cultures. Rockville done a tremendous job and it's, they totally devoted to, uh, to help the Asian communities and help them to vote, help them to get uh, jobs or help them to resolve any issues. And City of Rockville is just, from the historical point, is a wonderful with the Asian community. You can find out more about the task force efforts by attending one of their meetings, which is held every third Wednesday of the month at Rockville City Hall, or head to our website at rockvillemd.gov and search Asian Pacific American Task Force. For County Report This Week, 
I'm Kathy Dantzler. With that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm Lorna Virgili, and thank you for watching.